Welcome to the Joy of Music. My name is Diane Bish, and I would like to invite you to join us today as we bring you a special program entitled Great Hymns of Praise and Worship with my special guest, Elizabeth Elliott. As author, lecturer, and radio host of her program, Gateway to Joy, Elizabeth Elliott is one of the outstanding women in Christianity today. We're going to be talking about a subject dear to her heart, and that is Great Hymns of Faith. Thank you for joining us. We're speaking with Elizabeth Elliot today about great hymns of the church, and along with knowing the words to so many wonderful hymns, she also travels around the country and the world speaking to groups and churches, is an author of many books, and also has her own radio program, Gateway to Joy, which she tells me uh, is on five days a week. I know you have a, an audience of millions, but how do you do all these things? Well, by the grace of God, obviously, uh, they're just things that sort of have been thrust upon me. I, I never dreamed of even being a writer, let alone a broadcaster. It's just the mercy of God, that's all I know. Uh, it was about 11 years ago that people at Back to the Bible in Lincoln, Nebraska, asked me if I would consider doing a radio program. And so I've, I've been doing it ever since, and it has been a tremendous blessing to me because I get wonderful letters from people who tell me that it has been helpful to them. And I get a lot of sorrowful letters as well, and I'm able to encourage and, and help people. And so, um, as for how I do it, there are times when I think to myself, I don't know how I do it, because I'm a housewife. I do cook and iron and clean toilets and do ordinary things that any woman does. And I have a husband to feed. Um, I have a radio program as well, in addition to my radio program, I have a newsletter that goes out, it's called the Elizabeth Elliott Newsletter, and that's under the auspices of Servant Publications in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Then, of course, there's always hanging over my head preparations for my next broadcast, whatever that may be. And by far the biggest job that I have is correspondence, just the, the letters that come to my own home. Those take the biggest chunk of my life. And all I can say, Diane, is that every single day I get up, I know the things that I have to do, I know that there will be unexpected things, and I also know that the Lord's going to help me. And so I just find myself walking around the house going from one thing to the other saying, the Lord God will help me. And this is from Isaiah 50, verse 7, the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded, and therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. And I learned that verse back when I was a teenager, and I heard a woman doctor named Virginia Blakesley, a missionary from Africa, she, talk, she told about some of her hair-raising experiences in Africa. And whether she said it only once during that whole week or every single day, I don't know because it stuck so completely in my mind and I will never forget the intensity with which I saw that woman, tears pouring down her face as she leaned across that pulpit having told us hair-raising stories. But she, re re she repeated this wonderful verse in this way, and I never forgot the way in which she said it, the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. And that has become one of my life verses.
Don't you think that sorrow sometimes in a, in a hymn writer's life uh, brings them to writing a hymn like it is well with my soul and some of these other hymns that are, that are so meaningful that they've really come out of sorrow, sadness. Many people know the story of what happened to the hymn writer Horatio Spafford and what it was that galvanized him to write this most beautiful hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And the billows had certainly rolled over that man, Mr. Spafford, because he had sent his wife and four little daughters on a ship where they were going to England and he was to meet them later on another boat. And the ship on which his wife and daughters were sailing went to the bottom. Only his wife of that family survived. And I had the privilege of meeting the fifth child in that family who was born after this disaster. And so she was the only one of the four other children. And she was in her 90s when I met her in Jerusalem. We had tea together. And she told me that her mother had told the story of what had happened when she was thrown into the ocean and desperately trying to get a hold of her four little tiny girls, she was able only to touch the hem of one of the dresses of the little girl, and she was not able to grab it. And so she lost all four of those children. But this lady told me I was number five. And so the, Spafford had written that beautiful hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. But Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. In the market square of Wittenberg stands the statue of Martin Luther, which reads, Believe on the Gospel. When Martin Luther composed the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, based on scripture, he was giving comfort to people in distress. Persecution of certain Christians was increasing, especially as some questioned the tenets of the Catholic Church in Germany during the 1500s. These suffering believers knew that Jesus was their savior, but sought assurance and confidence as they faced growing hardships.
I've heard you speak about, um, on your tapes about hymns, Come Thou Almighty King, Fairest Lord Jesus, A Mighty Fortress, some of these great hymns that bring to us our heritage in the Christian faith. And uh, I think, and I know that you think, that this is very important for our young people and for all of us to know our great Christian heritage that we have. A mighty fortress is our God. It's one of Luther's great hymns. And this too has been a bulwark to me in dark times of my life. Our listeners probably would not know that I have lost not one, but two husbands. My second husband died of cancer. And I can remember singing this hymn with him. He also knew and loved hymns. He was a good deal older than I, so I don't think he ever knew what praise songs were. But the words to a mighty fortress are so powerful. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amidst the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal. And of course, this adversary of, my, of ours is the devil himself. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing were not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Just ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth, his name, that means Lord of the armies of heaven. From age to age the same, and he will win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure. Below his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. And of course, that would be the word of God that can fell our adversary, Satan. And the last stanza says, that word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them, abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, his truth abideth still, his kingdom is forever. And we can hang on to that, can't we? Well, that's a whole sermon in itself. It certainly is. Some of our viewers realize that there was a lady who was blinded at the age of six weeks because of the mistake of a doctor who put the wrong medicine in her eyes or something. And her name was Fanny Crosby. And she wrote at least 8,000 hymns. My father told us that, and I've heard since that it's probably more like 10,000. And so many of them are just wonderfully singable. And I came across a little poem that that dear lady, that dear little girl, wrote when she was only nine years old, Fanny Crosby. She said, oh, what a happy soul am I, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. 
and she wrote so many hymns, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, and on and on, 8,000. How do you feel that we can teach hymns to our young people? A lot of people say, well, our young kids don't like hymns. And uh, of course, a lot of them don't know the hymns, but uh, they know the praise songs. Well, the only reason they don't know the hymns, Diane, is because nobody's taught them. That's right. If all they're being taught is the praise songs, which usually is shown on a screen overhead, um, of course, we can't blame them that they don't know the hymns, but I think it's, it behooves the pastors and the teachers in the Sunday school and as many other adults as may still know what hymns are to make a point of teaching these children. And I've heard the same argument, young people don't like hymns. And I said, how could they possibly like hymns unless someone has taught them? And People who have enthusiasm for hymns should be able to give some of that enthusiasm to the young people. Young people love music, there's no question about do. that. I think most of us recognize that it is more difficult to memorize prose than it is to memorize poetry. And maybe many of you have learned poetry at some stage in your schooling. And we learned a lot of poetry. We even learned A.A. A. Milne and all those cute Christopher Robin books. But we also learned these hymns, really, I've often said by, by osmosis. I don't remember our parents saying, now we want you to memorize this hymn. Yeah. They sat down and played the piano. Mm -hmm. We sang. We sang. And children age two can learn a hymn very easily, very much more nice. easily when they get to be six. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you start your children, the more likely it is that they will learn too to love the old hymns.
we've been speaking with Elizabeth Elliot about great hymns of the church. And another one of my favorites, and uh, many people's favorite, is Fairest Lord Jesus. I love that one too. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, thou my soul's glory, joy, and crown. Fair are the meadows, fairer still the woodlands, robed in the blooming garb of spring. Jesus is fairer, Jesus is purer, who makes the woeful heart to sing. Fair is the sunshine, fairer still the moonlight and all the twinkling starry host. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels heaven can boast. And then there's the last stanza, which is not in many of the hymn books. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of God and Son of Man, glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thine. Thank you for joining us today on the joy of music as we have brought you a special program entitled great hymns of praise and worship with my special guest elizabeth elliott we pray that you have been blessed and enriched by the music and words today and we look forward to seeing you again next week on the joy of music <laughs>